What's up, everybody? Welcome again to Chasing Creativity Podcast. This is episode five with Sebastian and Topher, creators of Duke of Defense. Today's episode is with Topher and Sebastian, co-creators of the tower defense game, Duke of Defense. Now, Sebastian and Topher have an awesome dynamic in how they approach the design of this game, where Sebastian is mainly in charge of the coding uh, behind the game and Sebastian the music. Now, we get into the topic of that collaborative experience in designing the game. Um, They actually live in different states, so coming together and addressing just that that distance to be able to design something like this, uh, it ends up being a really interesting conversation especially about that creative process. Um, I don't want to dive too much into the episode before we just kick things off, but it is an awesome episode. If you're interested in game design or you're interested in the music behind games, uh, great episode. Now, following the episode, especially if you like the game, if you just like, you know, hearing the conversation, please go check out the game. There's a demo out. Um, They recently had a Kickstarter. I know that they had... A Kickstarter campaign that ended. I don't know if they're restarting one, but really go and check out the game again, Duke of Defense. Um, check them out and show your support and check out the demo. It's a really cool game. Um, so aside from that, we're just going to jump right in. Um, a couple pieces about the podcast. Again, please share this with your friends. Follow the podcast on SoundCloud. Follow on iTunes or Google, whatever you happen to use. Um, it really makes a big difference for the show. Um, so that's it. Hope you enjoy the show. Start things off if um, if it works for you, and just both kind of introduce yourself and uh, kind of dig into the game a little bit. Uh, yeah, Seb, you want to go first? Uh, I don't. You go ahead. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so, hi, my name is Topher, and I am a game dev addict. I've been an addict for about a year. Um, <laughs> I met i started doing game dev about a a year ago now when i met sebastian uh online and he originally hired me to do the music for the game that he was working on and we eventually just became friends and it instead of him like paying me to to do the work we just kind of started working together on the game and it kind of became our thing together and that's for the first game that we put out together which is don't sink it's a, Uh a pirate game uh, like a pirate simulation yep. game that's out on steam and it's coming to xbox soon and that's all super cool week and a half. Cough, cough. in a week and a half yeah sweet yeah and after that we moved on to the current game that we're doing which is duke of defense which uh-huh. is how you reached out to me through my instagram i was pumping some music that i was doing for that yeah yeah y- that was actually and, yeah. s- sorry i didn't mean to jump in there that was actually like one of my questions is how did you guys even meet? So was it just totally random, you know, uh, in, in the way that you found each other? That is. Oh, I, sure. <laughs> I can tell this story. So uh, at the time, so originally, don't think I had worked on it by myself uh-huh. for like probably like five or six months because I, I never had a team. I, I was just like, ugh, people, too much <laughs> trouble. Uh, and then I realized that I can't write music because I suck at it. So I posted in, there's a server in called the Game Maker Discord. And I just posted in like the general channel. I was like, does anyone know a musician? And someone oh. was like, yeah, you should ask Topher. And I hit him up and originally we had like a paid thing going for like the, for the very early on, like for I think like a week or two, very minimal. And then eventually, yeah, we got agreed did some rev share instead. Cool. Yeah. So that's, that's how I met. And then, yeah, that's how we found our next teammate too was I found out my art sucks too. <laughs> so Topher introduced me to an artist. <laughs> so, so there's a third person for the game. Is that true? Like for the, the art behind it? Is that right? For for don't sink yes not for um not for Duke oh okay okay for for Duke we were we were contracting someone but he's not like I uh, see okay in in cohorts cohorts uh, he's not part of our team it's just more of a commission based thing we just paid him a one time fee just hey make us some art please yeah yeah cool okay so um awesome Discord it's awesome that you mentioned that because I found with music I mean Discord is awesome. People are so supportive of one another. You yeah. can share music, share ideas, share all sorts of stuff. Yep. Yeah, Discord's Discord's been awesome. So that's pretty cool. Yeah, Discord is is great for making new connections and, and meeting people. I have countless people that I really call friends that I've met completely through Discord. You know, yeah. Sebastian included. You know, him and I are pretty 
damn good friends now and you know business partners yeah we hang out pretty every day yeah that's super cool and you guys live separately right i i believe Topher, you're in california and and uh sebastian you're in oregon is that right yep Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. So what's that like? I mean, obviously you guys are speaking over Discord a lot and stuff, but in terms of that creative piece kind of coming together and bringing ideas together for the game and for the music, what's that like? That's Um, a huge question. Uh, Yeah, you want to start? Topher, I'll find (laughs) it somewhere I can leak in there. Yeah. um, So it is kind of a challenge at times, but I don't think it's ever been something that even Seb and I have like ever even acknowledged as being a challenge. We just kind of work within our limitations Uh so discord has like a screen share function that we use you know constantly to share screen when we're when we're doing game stuff you know sebastian does the core of the programming so when he's trying to show me stuff or if we're trying to illustrate ideas like that's an invaluable tool we need to have that to be able to be on the same page you know and when it comes to the music side of things it's really just with Don't Think it was different because at first he hired me, so he kind of was like explaining the game, showing me what he had for the game. Like, this is what I have, this is what I have in mind. He even had a little bit that he had written, uh, a Best little bit of music. Five uh-huh. seconds I've ever written in my life, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> he sent me like a little snippet of five seconds and he said, Can you work with this? This is what I'm thinking. Yeah, like, yeah, just yeah. telling me, like, just emotions. Like, this is how I want it to feel. And I kind of just go on off of that. But with this game, with Duke of Defense, it's been more, I think, hands off for, for you, Seb. I would say. Yeah, we we kind of we have like a kind of a ping pong sort of system in place. Like, he'll he'll say, I, "I'm working on a new track. What do you think?" Send me like twenty to thirty seconds, mm-hmm. and I'll either say like, "Yeah, it's pretty good." Otherwise, like, "Yeah, maybe like ease off this bit or something." I, I really just act as feedback uh-huh, uh-huh. more than anything. Yeah, and then he just like even I think he. The, the first song he wrote, he completely just threw out the window. I didn't even say anything bad about it. He just threw it out. Yeah. Uh-huh. So it's kind of just on his side, yeah. Because I wanted to jump into the song that that's the first way I found you is, you know, I think I was searching music producer or, or composer on Instagram tags. And I came across the song where you had that OP1, you know, in like mm-hmm. five different or five or six different tracks playing at once for the song, which is yep. awesome, by the way. I that song is super, super catchy. Um, <laughs> Thanks, man. Yeah, yeah. And if it's okay with you, I'll play it in the podcast, you know, maybe at the beginning or something so everyone can hear it. But Definitely yeah, cool, yeah. Cool, cool. So kind of take me through that process, I guess, if you will. So when you were looking at the ideas for that music specifically, you were trying to match it to an emotion, correct, for the game, as you mentioned. What were you going for there? And kind of just dig, dig into that a little bit. <clears throat> it's funny. The, the progression of, like, the soundtrack for Duke of Defense has definitely... It, it wasn't always what you heard, what you yeah, saw it's, it's in that video. It was something. The game too. It's definitely evolved. Yeah, I agree. It it was something totally different when we started. I wanted medieval the, sort of right. Yeah, exactly. This like medieval. It was sounded like really smooth, mm-hmm. like really like easy listening, jazzy styles. Okay. It wasn't like electronic really at all. Like, yeah, it, it had a lot of acoustic elements to it. Um, and and the feedback. You know, Sebastian's always been supportive, but like people were saying, you know, it's not energetic enough. It doesn't, you know, inspire the right feeling. So Uh I decided to just take a totally different angle and was like, you know what, let's let me do something that really, you know, is more blood pumping. That's really Uh more energetic. You know, I wanted I I really like the idea of having like an easy listening soundtrack. But at the end of the day, I I wanted more to have a game that felt exciting to play. Yeah. So really, when I retackled the the soundtrack which was that song that was the, the first song that i i did yeah black ice when i when i wanted to like redo that i the one thing that i had in mind was like exciting something like gripping black ice mm-hmm. so yeah. i i started out with just you know chip tune elements which is just you know from a yeah like a producing a music uh-huh. standpoint that was just like basic uh you know waveforms like square wave uh-huh just yeah. figuring it out the, the drums were originally just white noise tracks that's how like you know older systems did it just white noise with different pitches mm-hmm. you know that's how they made the drums and then i eventually just like went wild with it and added more modern sounding drums and, and instruments i think there's maybe an organ in there i forget now yeah but i just kept layering on and i ended up with this thing that i didn't even expect to create even yeah you know i it wasn't exactly something that i had set out to do i just set out to make something more exciting sounding that 
Yeah, yeah. I, I wanted to fit the game in a different way. Um, and it just ended up being... Kind of a build like, as you go, a, yeah. A patchwork thing. But it, it, it was a new style for the game and people liked it. So that's how I've continued it. Um, and I've, I've even been working on the next song. I posted a little bit of it on my Instagram as oh. well. And I'm kind of just following that that line of 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 thinking you know that that method just starting out simple and just building onto it with Style. the idea of you know with trying to make it um, gripping mm-hmm. exciting compelling that kind of thing so I, i'm really just basing it off of one idea well i think you just taking a listen to that music i feel like you nailed it when i was looking at the gameplay and then i was listening to the music as well for me it was a perfect fit i i really really did i, I was really digging it so that's something i wanted to um talk about as well is that marriage between the game and the music is hugely important oh yeah uh, you know i mean that's kind of a no-brainer you know talking about games like a uh, classic zelda and then um i know like stardew valley people will say that they're more into almost the music than the game or just as important almost. So one, I feel like I just want to say, I feel like you nailed it with that song. I think it's really, really cool. Um, Thank you. Yeah, yeah. So when I was thinking about what I wanted to talk about today when, when I had you both on, I guess I wanted to just get your feedback too on how important you feel like it is to have both at that same kind of playing field, the game and the music. I feel like they both have to be there, right? If one's lacking, it's going to... It's you're gonna feel yeah. the gameplay. I, I think it's it's pretty essential. Like it's it's a weird thing too. There's like no rule about it. Like what what Topher and I originally wanted from the game is extremely different from what each of us wanted from the music, and it it kind of just you know you've done it right when you've done it right. Uh-huh. At least that's that's how I feel. I, I just run off a of gut feeling ninety nine percent of the time. Yeah. And so I think that's with any game. That's the the games that have really good soundtracks like Zelda. I yeah. think that's where the person really experienced the game the way the the game uh, were designed originally experience it whatever their vision was it's, it's shared at a certain point and once you get that like it's pretty easy to make the music i think but it's essential it is it's super important because if you play yep. even stardew and i love it i love the stardew soundtrack yeah yeah but if you play that game long enough it's definitely lacking like um uh i don't know what you'd call it like uh ambition okay maybe, yeah like growth like it's it's kind of it's too subtle uh-huh yeah 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 um and there's there's a few other games that that do that as well that uh, one game that nailed it was quite like the Minecraft soundtrack is is known for being like one of the best. It seems like a really boring soundtrack. They they hold chords sometimes for, like a solid thirty seconds, which you're like that seems like horrible music. <laughs> but then you listen to it and you put it in with the game and you're like, oh, that's that's pretty good. Yeah. So yeah, it's yeah really, it yeah comes down oh, no, to the sorry, game. Sorry, I didn't mean to cut you off. Yeah. No, you're good. That's that's all I had to say. <laughs> Yeah. And so that's one thing I definitely wanted to dig into is that marriage between the two, because I think that's super, super cool. Um, so you have Duke of Defense coming out now. I think you, as, as I understand, is it October? Is that true for release? Um, we had some new revelations regarding the due date. on oh, OK. <laughs> so I think we'll still do October because we want to. Yeah. Um, but it, it might be like a full release slash kick, uh, early access. OK. We're not sure yet. Awesome. It's still in the air. But we'll have something playable for sure by October. Awesome. Awesome. So then I would imagine, you know, moving forward, you guys have kind of built this synergy between game development, music development. So this is, I would guess, just kind of a starting, starting point, right? Just continue to, to move yeah. forward. Um, I'll, I'll let you on this one, Topher, because you yeah. have a better idea of the overview of things right now. <laughs> well, I mean, you know, we've already kind of I wanted to say we've kind of made a, a bit of a name for ourselves with our previous game, mm-hmm. but I, that's also not entirely true because our artist is not um, with us on this game. Um, the reason why he didn't join us for this game is because he has been busy with um, with stuff in his life, like mm. you know, getting a new job, and he's still going to school. So we we Seb and I made this game because we needed something to do in the meantime. Yeah, you know, like a needed, bridge. Yeah, yeah, something to bridge the gap until he, our artist is ready to move on to the next project. So that's what we're kind of doing here. So you're right in saying that this is kind of like the start of our, I guess our our business, our game dev making career, kind of mm-hmm. for for me at least, or you could even say our our career together. Um, yeah, but it's that, important yeah. saying that Sebastian has made. A, a few games even before him and I started to work together. Don't Think was what, your third game? 
Yeah, I don't talk about the first one at all because it was a shame. <laughs> well, but yeah, I had a, I had another one too. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Because I read on your Kickstarter, um, your bio, and you had started a long, long time ago, right? And then there was, a, you know, this foundational period where you're just learning to code, you're learning to do game development, and it was a lot of trial and error, as you kind of put it. And now you're really putting mm -hmm. out things uh, as of like the last two or three games that you're really proud of. Is that true? Yeah, yeah. There there was I started when I was like 11 uh -huh. and so there was probably like 100 just throw out the window projects. There's some where I was like, you know, the angsty ambitious 16-year-old. I'm like this is going to be the next big thing. <laughs> and then I realized I was 16 and I was making hot garbage. <laughs> um but yeah, around like 2021 I started getting more of an idea of like what was expected in the games industry and mm -hmm. I raised my own standards and got a little more critical of my own work. Yeah. And yeah, since then I I would say yeah, I've gone a lot better. Um it's more that like you just kind of learn what people's standards are and what good looks like. Mm. It's hard. I didn't grow up with internet, so my sense of what a good game was was what I had on a CD. Oh, you know, yeah. like I, I played the original Call of Duty like uh, four for uh -huh. maybe three years after it came out <laughs> with bots and yeah. no one else. Yeah. Like I didn't know what good was. <laughs> That's funny. Modern Warfare Two is like my favorite Call of Duty game of all time. It's a great. They're game. very similar. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. Call it, yeah, Modern Warfare is awesome. But yeah, oh, so so that's interesting. So you knew, I mean, well, you at least started when you are about 11. So did you know early on that, I mean, this is the path you wanted to take? Oh, yeah. Like, literally month one, I, I was telling my parents, which they did not support. They thought it was a horrible decision. <laughs> um, one, of my, one of my parents was uh, actually, he has a master's, I, I think it's a master's, uh, in computer science. Uh -huh. So like, he's always pushed me, like, don't use Game Maker, use, um, use C++, yeah. be a man. <laughs> Uh, basically trying to push a 15 year old into like computer science, right, like right, really right. high tier learning. And I'm not a very smart person. So I just, no, it's okay. <laughs> so you like G it's GML, right? So I don't know very much about it. Um, so, but GML, you kind of can piece together different engines or is it one engine and you can kind of, uh, yeah, you're on the money. It's, it's one engine. It's one language for that engine. It's, it's kind of like an all in one tool. Uh, -huh. uh and the whole idea behind it is it's meant to simplify the whole process for, it, uh, for you as a developer. So like with Don't Sync, uh, we had it fully developed for Windows. Mm. I had nothing prepared for Xbox. Mm. I got the dev kits and such. I plugged it in and I hit run and it was on my screen running on my Xbox. Oh man, yeah, that's cool. That's a simplicity factor yeah. in there. Um, it doesn't make Microsoft any easier to work with, work with but <laughs> <laughs> it de definitely makes the game dev side easier. Mm. Cool. Yeah. See, I, I had no idea about that. Actually, I have a friend at work who is very interested in, in game development and little like I, I don't really use this now at all actually but I did computer engineering in my undergrad um now I oh, yeah, yeah so I but the thing is I never did any game development it was always interesting to me but they had us working very low level like C as you mentioned maybe like some C++ and mm, yeah. that actually in my opinion wasn't if you were interested in game development, it wasn't very useful at all. It's it's no, it, it wasn't. Yeah, it's just it isn't. Yeah, way too low level, and it's you know crunching data. And it's like how much fun is that, honestly? <laughs> so yeah, it, it's like if you had to build the keyboard to play music. Exactly. I'm like, why? Why would you do that? Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. The, yeah. The key thing with with Game Maker, the software that him and I both use to make our games, is that it, everything, pretty much the entire language, is just one giant abstraction for a lot of those low level things. Mm. Like <clears throat> in C, if you wanted to get like keyboard input, I can't even tell you how many lines <laughs> of code it would be. But for yeah. for GML, which is the language, the proprietary language for Game Maker, you it's you know, it's it's one function. It's a one liner to yeah. get literally type keyboard check yeah. and then the key you want. Like that's it. That's it. Yeah. 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 So you're just pulling in a bunch of libraries and different functions that are pre written. So it's you're not rewriting the wheel, which is yeah, smart. You know, exactly. Yeah, yeah, that's awesome. So um yeah, that was one thing my buddy was like, What how do they even do this? You know, make sure to dress out and I was like, okay, I'll do it. So I actually learned about GML before today because I, I actually didn't know the process at all. I didn't know w what that's like. But from what I saw with GML, it's super, super cool. And you can get up and running pretty, like, I watched some YouTube videos where it was, you know, a few lines of code and there's a, there, there's a character moving on the screen, you know? You could have a playable demo of, like, a platformer in, like, an hour. Yeah. We literally, the, the Kickstarter demo for Duke of Defense, I think, took us, like, literally a month. Oh, and man, we had yeah. something very close to that, like two month, two weeks before. Um, it just was lacking a lot of polish and had a few bugs. Uh -huh. But like half that work came into like ridiculous stuff, like making sure you could have a game pad and uh -huh. have two players and, you know, like 
like features that no one appreciates but are but it's expected yep those kinds of things yep. um but yeah you can make a game in 24 hours if you really want to i guess <laughs> that's awesome i kind of want to play with it now honestly just to like goof around see what comes out but that's that's super super yeah. cool just uh just to goof around but let's dig in a little bit to duke of defense what was the inspiration to go with tower defense is that something you just guys just both love to play so it it worked that way or so, what was <laughs> yeah I'll, I'll i got this one. a good story <laughs> so this is actually a kind of an interesting story yeah before i met seb I didn't really do game dev professionally in, in any capacity. I've always used Game Maker, like even when I was young, because even though I've, I've primarily done music as like my, my hobby, I, I was a professional uh, web developer cool. for uh, a time before game development. And that's when I, programming was like my thing uh-huh. that I decided to pursue in a professional capacity. And game development was just like really hobby, hobby, like just kind of on the side, like, oh, download Game Maker, mess around with it, whatever. Yeah. And a few years before I met Sebastian, I was like, you know what? I'm going to make a game just for fun on the side. I'm going to I'm going to do it. The plot twist is that I didn't do it. (laughs) I started a game uh, and I I paid for some art, which is in Duke of Defense still today, Uh like the player character and the trees and such, the towers, some of the towers, the the enemies. And I I paid for art and was like, I'm going to make this cool tower defense game that's kind of like inspired by a tower defense game that I really liked. And because like a lot of game dev is like taking a simple idea or an idea from another game and like, oh, it would be cool if they did this. Well, I'm going to make a game where that that is a true thing where they do do this, you know, kind of remixing other ideas. That's what I was trying to do. Just Mm -hmm. take the tower defense idea and remix it into something that I wanted to see. And I started this project, you know, two years before I met Seb and I just like gave up on it. Too busy with being a, a web developer full time and doing whatever it was that I had to do at the time. I just gave up. And then fast forward to after Don't Sync is released and our artist is not available to move on to the next project. And, you know, Sebastian and I are trying to figure out what we're going to do in the interim. And I just happened to remember that I had this project that I started. And I said, hey, let's continue this game that I started. Let's just take this thing. We already have some art. We already have some rudimentary programming that I had started. Let's just take this and run with it. Yeah. Like, let's actually finish this project. And that's... Oh, I want to interject. He missed a really key detail. Oh, yeah. What? What did I miss? I just random, just out of the blue, because it sounded fun, I said, we should do a tower defense. Oh, yes. That's which right. Which triggered him remembering. He's <laughs> like, wait, I have this abandoned project yeah. from two years ago. It's so weird that you say that. <laughs> yeah. Those kind of things are so weird. I want to emphasize the fact that I feel like there's weird synchronicities in this world, and this is just like perfectly outlines one of them. Because oh, yeah. like, how bizarre you guys come together. You guys are, are like both, you know, approaching... Game dev and it's like, hey, I happen to have this on the back burner from two years ago. It's just a perfect fit for moving forward. I mean, yeah, yeah that's really we're cool. like oddly synchronized. We've had a few moments where I'm like, this is odd. <laughs> <laughs> we have yeah, days where I, we're like woken up at like literally the same time, <laughs> DM'd at the exact same time, just weird stuff like that. Uh huh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's awesome. I, I, you know, I played the demo. It's really, really cool. So thank you, man. Thank I'm, you. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. I'm looking forward to. Uh, to, to seeing it in in full full effect yeah we're happy you enjoyed the demo man we're, we're we're definitely working hard we work every day on it pretty much um sebastian even has a, a twitch stream that he he works on the game live on on twitch for people to watch him program it and stuff oh nice yeah. nice nice cool well i Four will uh, I'll, you know i'll shout that out with yeah. the podcast too and i'll probably jump on cool, and watch yeah, yeah. <laughs> i'll probably try Thanks. and get some tips if i if i download what is it called game Sorry. game maker game maker, game yeah, maker yeah. yeah use some gml yeah that'd be cool um sweet sweet so uh, if you don't mind jumping back into the music a little bit Topher, i sure. wanted to kind of pick your brain on when you're coming up with these ideas. I know you said it was kind of by chance layering different things on top of each other and things came together and they seemed to really fit. Did you find anything when you were in that kind of music writing process that really helped throughout this time? Was it certain times a day? Was it different techniques with, were you always working on the OP1? Things like that. Cause I always like to kind of ask those questions for myself too. (laughs) Yeah. 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 I, I think that every, Every musician or composer, producer, you know, whatever line of music that you're in, as, as long as you're involved with the music itself, you, you have some kind of a process. You have a favorite DAW, you have a MIDI controller of some kind. I mean, some people don't, I guess. You could do it all with a keyboard and mouse if you want to lay the tracks out the hard way. 
But I mean, you have a process yep. and I, and I am definitely no exception. I have a process. I have a favorite doll that I always load up. My MIDI controller of choice is the OP one cool. that you saw in the video. Yeah, I like um, it. Yeah. That is its own synthesizer, its own instrument, but I do use it as a MIDI controller. So that's pretty much every day or every time that I want to get started with music. That's mm-hmm. what I do. I load up my DAW, which is Reason. I don't know if you've ever heard uh-huh. of or oh, used yeah. Reason. Yep. That's my favorite to use. Um, I plug in my MIDI controller and a lot of the times if I'm starting from scratch, if it's not like a song that I'm already working on, I will just start playing. Mm-hmm. I'll, I'll pick it, a sound, an instrument that I like, and I will just kind of jam on some ideas. Obviously, it's not super you know, free form. I, I try to restrict myself to whatever style I'm going for, and I'll just kind of fuss around until I have a motif, mm-hmm. like an idea that I want to go with. And then once I have something, I'll record that in, and then I'll, I'll try to build off of that. Mm-hmm. Normally, I, that ends up being like the, the primary part of the song, like the, the chorus, if you want to call it that, the hook, um, and I'll try to build off of that. Mm-hmm. That's generally my process. But with all of that being said, m- doing music for game dev or for, for video games in general is not the same as making just a, a track for uh-huh. fun, I would say. Because there's a lot more you have to take into account. Like Topher loves how many times I say, no, we can't do that. Loves it. <laughs> <laughs> I, well, there, there are a lot of things you have to take into account. Because, like, it, first of all, this is the song that somebody's going to hear a lot. Yeah. Like, if you make a two-minute track and a, and a level in the game takes, like, Eight, ten, ten minutes. minutes right, right. Then they're going to be hearing that song on loop yep. a few times. So, obviously, you have to make sure that it's something that can be repeated that and isn't annoying you know it's got to be something that can be listened to multiple times that yep. somebody won't get sick of too fast and another thing is that you know a game is not constantly high energy like there are lulls in a game it, it has to Pace. cater to a yeah. lot of it has to be paced properly exactly mm-hmm. that's the word i'm looking for like in, in a tower defense game specifically there are times when there are no enemies on screen like between the waves so there's got to be parts in the song where it's more chill yeah you know it, it's got to have ups and downs yeah because if it's constantly like really chill or it's constantly high energy then it's going to be it's going to inflict that feeling onto the player yep. the player it might stress them out if it's too high energy or if it's too low energy they might you know it, it's not going to convey the right feeling so it, it's kind of a tricky balance i i, I like to draw a metaphor between making a game too easy and too hard mm. it's kind of like that like you have to get it just right just challenging enough and with the music it's no exception it's yeah. got to be just the right balance of of energy of course it depends on what kind of game it is but for, for this game specifically that's definitely something i've kept in mind yeah yeah that that's super cool i i really hadn't thought in ad or excuse me i haven't really thought about that all that much because when i'm maybe working on music you're trying to you know, put together something that's pleasing to the ear and convey emotion. But really, as things come together, it's either eh, I like this or I don't, you know, <laughs> it's not right. really it's, mm-hmm. it's not tied to something where, hey, this doesn't fit at all for the vibe we're going in or going for in this game or, hey, this fits really, really, really well. Let's keep running with this. So I would imagine that would be a really interesting part of the music development is, you know, making sure it fits, as you mentioned, to different uh, parts of the game. Now, is there a lot of back and forth then from, you know, both of you saying, okay, hey, there's a new level. This is going to be kind of the way the level plays out or the, uh, uh, you know, the wave plays out and then you're going to go and work on the music accordingly or is it just passing things back and forth and kind of seeing what fits? I would say it's a little bit of both, you Mm -hmm. know, I, cause like I, when I'm working on a new track, I'll normally send Sebastian like the first 20 seconds of it. Like he mentioned earlier, I'll say like, this is what I'm working on, yay or nay. And then he'll either say like, this is good, or can you tweak this? Mm -hmm. Or this is garbage and you should feel bad. (laughs) And I think think we both try to guide each other sort of. Yeah. Not having any directions, the hardest way to go about anything. And Mm -hmm. so if the other person says, I think we need this sort of, Mm -hmm. maybe try it. Yeah. Then... Yeah. Usually we nail it like first or second attempt. If there was a catchphrase for our teamwork, like our development process, it would be try it. That's uh-huh. always what we say to each other. Because whether, like even if he suggests something that I'm not like entirely a fan of, I still won't know until we try it. Uh-huh. So it's always just try it. Because yeah. you'll, you'll never know until you see or hear it. And 
as as far as sending stuff back and forth goes to to kind of put a cap on that a lot of times what i'll do when i'm entering a project fresh like what i did with this project is i had like gifs of gameplay that he had sent me or like you know i had screenshots of our art and stuff i would yeah. keep that open like on another monitor or off to the side that i could look at while i was doing the music and then you can play them at the same time and see like does yeah. that feel good does is this something that that fits mm. right you know like if i'm playing music that just doesn't go along with what i'm seeing then that's kind of a, a tip like hey this this might not be the best choice but at the end of the day it's so subjective that sometimes it can be a challenge oh yeah totally yeah and at the end of the day it is as you mentioned going to be subjective and you want to do something that you feel with you know for both of you fits and that you enjoy and then you know you pass it out and see see how people respond to it yeah, yeah. definitely it's it's not as fine a line as programming the game, you know, because with, with, with programming a game, you put in a number and bam, that's how fast the player walks. Yeah. You know, you know, if it feels good after like one or two times, because it's just a number, you know, there, there is a kind, it's not really a right or wrong answer, but there's like an acceptable range. Except rolling. <laughs> okay. But yeah, yeah, with, with music, it, it can be so many different things. Mm. Like when you look at the game and you take away the music, like if you watch our trailer that, that I had put together and you, you take the music out of it, there really is almost like a limitless amount of stuff you could imagine for the soundtrack. Yeah. There's so many directions that we could have taken it. Like I could have gone the, the more like natural, like acoustic sounding instruments. I got, could have gotten like medieval instruments like dulcimers and, mm. um, uh, you know, like organs yeah. and stuff like that made it sound like really like Gregorian chant mm -hmm. style music. I could have gone that route, but it, I, I, who knows if it would have matched as well. Who knows what other things I would have had to try in order to make that well, a better fit. What matters is that that's not what you ended up wanting. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that is what matters. Yeah. We we're, we have yeah. what we have and I'm just going to keep going with that. Yeah. Since people have generally received it well, I would think. Oh yeah. I, I, it seems. No, I, I, I really like it. I'm just kind of trying to picture, I can see the gameplay in my, you know, my mind right now and putting more of a medieval kind of Gregorian chant type behind it. It wouldn't be as exciting. I really do. I feel like the music fits really, really well. It's cool. I, I definitely, yeah. Yeah. I like the lead you have on top of it. It's almost like, and I feel like that probably came from playing a lot of guitar, you know, cause like that lead just feels like it would <laughs> flow out of like writing guitar riffs kind of <laughs> thanks man a, a lot of um a lot of my writing is it, it's funny that you say that it sounds like somebody that would play guitar uh, piano is my my primary instrument that's like the first instrument i learned uh -huh. it's the one that i'm most practiced and most comfortable with and when i was a kid i thought that there was nothing cooler than somebody who could shred on an electric guitar but as a kid, I couldn't do that. I, I didn't have a guitar, first of all. And when I finally had gotten my hands on one, I was just absolutely atrocious at it. The only thing I had known was piano. Yeah. So what I had eventually done was I would start to to learn popular, like classic rock songs, mm -hmm. but like on the piano, just by kind of like, you know, hearing it out and uh, trying to like learn guitar <laughs> solos on piano. It was pretty ridiculous, honestly. It's not the best way to learn <laughs> piano, but a lot of my my like writing style to this day, I think is really inspired by that, mm. um, like older rock style, like bluesy styles. You'll, you'll notice in, in that song, Black Ice, I have a lot of grace notes, mm -hmm. a lot of, you know, like lead in notes. I hit like the blues note in that like pentatonic, uh, minor scale. Mm. I, I hit those all the time because I'm still calling on like my roots, like where I, how I originally learned mm. to play, uh, which is like really like a bluesy, more loose style of playing. And, and that's why it's funny that you say it sounds like somebody from who would something that somebody would write if they had played guitar, because I think that there's a lot of parallels that can be drawn there, like with, you know, looser styles of playing more bluesy, really like melodic leading yeah. of the song and everything. Yeah, yeah, totally. It it does. It fits really well. And I now that you mentioned that, I can see those pieces in it. Um, and yeah, I, I think it's it's really cool. It's a really good fit. Um, now. When I was looking at um, the Kickstarter, I I think I read that there's going to be thirty some levels. Is that correct? That's yeah. That's that's kind of what we had in mind. Uh -huh. um, as we develop it, our our ideas and what we want for the game definitely are super 
dynamic. Like we're changing every day, like what we want and and the scope of our project and and what we can and can't do. Obviously, at the end of the day, we want to have as many levels as possible. We put the number 30 because that's a number that we're confident we can hit by October, like when we want to have the game ready. Uh But if all goes well, obviously, if we are in a position that we're able to put more levels in, we want to put more levels in. Yeah. If there's if there's a possibility that each level can have its own song, obviously we would do that too, but I don't know if that's something that we can promise Yeah, because that's going to be a lot of music writing. (laughs) But we've had in mind, and and even what I've had in mind, is that each our game right now is broken up into like different environments. There are going to be forest levels where it's like, you know, green grass, a lot of... You saw in the trailer. Yeah, yeah, what you saw in the trailer, the the green trees. Uh, We also plan to have a snowy area with you know snow covered on the ground snow covered foliage and then also a desert area where it's it's sand and instead of trees there's like uh, cacti and um you know foliage you would find in the desert and i would like mm-hmm. rather than do songs specific to levels i, I want to have multiple tracks per area so like you know there's here's five um five-ish songs for the forest level that we can randomly apply or specifically apply to levels in this Mm. area um so i wanted to have at least 15 songs for the levels at first yeah um but as i you know go more and more i'm going to try to push that as hard as i can because you know the more that you can have the better that's that's Uh our mvp that's our minimum yeah exactly i i would definitely agree that 15 is is the the minimum that you will find and that's just for the levels you know i have music for the menu mm-hmm. that's already complete i have music if you played the demo you know you've heard that song there's music for the yeah. hub world kind of um and we're gonna have you know a story element to the game that we want to add i'm sure that i'll end up composing more pieces that go to that Boss battles yeah all this so <clears throat> 15 songs would be yeah. the absolute minimum uh-huh. i i would like to have closer to 30 that's that's like you know my personal goal for it and I think it, it definitely can be done. It's just about, you know, what how I'm allocating my time and stuff. Because music is not the only thing that I have to do. Of course, I'm responsible for all of the sound effects in the game. And I also help Seb from time to time do small programming tidbits where, you know, he just has too much to do. And I just kind of help out with uh-huh. with, some, with small He's stuff. Better, yeah, <laughs> with, with some math stuff. <laughs> That's cool. You guys have like a cool back and forth. I I appreciate that. You guys seem like, even though you're working, I would imagine working so much together, there would probably be times you're like, oh my God, but you guys seem just like best buds putting out a cool game. So that's awesome. Yeah. 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 I've I've worked with other people where by the end of the relationship, or even I would say a fourth, I despise them. (laughs) And this is the first time I've worked with someone where I didn't hate them within the first like month. Mm. So yeah, this is unique (laughs) in, in the way things have played out. That's cool. Yeah. We've never like gotten outwardly angry I mean, at each other i think we've gotten aggravated but like only like aggravated when like uh like designing something like uh i mentioned the role thing earlier being something else subjective <laughs> we the the role you feel in the demo i think is different right from the role we decided i don't remember yes. Point being, uh-huh. we had different roles we had one that was like linear like you just roll and uh-huh. you slide kind of right but topher won the role to like feel different and kind of like launch into it more realistic and it just feel better and i was like okay fine and then we did that and then i was like it's too slow and he's like no no it's too fast and <laughs> we, that took us like 30 minutes and we weren't mad but it was definitely like it's more of just like it was more war we have two different ideas of how we want a specific aspect of the game to be so we're just trying to stick to our guns because at the end of the day we both yep. want the same thing yeah 100 percent though we find the best middle grounds i love yeah. it i literally like there's no one i've worked with where i find a better middle ground like usually i compromise i'm like and yeah. there goes another shitty feature but this, like, constantly, I'm like, oh, my God, that yeah. is better. He was right. I was half That's right. That's awesome. This is perfect. Yeah, it's, it's always like we're, we're both kind of half right. We just, you, you have to find that that middle ground. And even when we get agitated with each other, I know, like, I don't know about you, Seb, but it, whenever, like, we disagree about something, like, I always feel bad about it afterward. I'm like, you know what, man, he he, he had such a good point, and I'm being <laughs> such a dingus right now. Like, uh, he's, he is right. I, I don't think I'm as stubborn with me design stuff usually with the exception of the role I'm, I'm usually pretty like that's a good idea except this this reason and you're like oh yeah well no, that, that, maybe, maybe i usually argue with like logic 99 percent of the time 
maybe my, not creative. my feeling bad is justified then because I'm more stubborn about it. <laughs> <laughs> well, there you have it. That's cool. No, no, no. That's cool because... It's how our marriage ended. Yeah. <laughs> After this podcast, this is what tears you guys apart now. <laughs> 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 no, uh, that's cool because collaborations, I mean, when you're both putting your all into something, you know, I've experience that same thing is you kind of latch onto it. And when you come up with an idea, you're like, okay, I love this idea. I, you know, and then if you're working with someone and they're like, well, I think it can be better here, here, and here, it's easy to say, no, like this is my thing. I want it to go this way, you know? So finding that middle ground, I'm, one is super, super important, but it's cool that you guys can, um, you know, one, it, it seems like you guys can talk it out and laugh about it, which is hugely important, but um, it seems like there's a really good balance and, you guys are coming to a place where both your ideas come together, you decide on something, you both really appreciate it. And I'm guessing that when you start looking at the outcome, you might almost feel like, wow, this is something that not one of you came up with. It, it just kind of came out of this synergy between you two, which I would imagine is really, really cool. Oh, absolutely. Mm. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. I, I, I tell the people around me very often, like, honestly, I, I don't know how, where I would be right now without Topher because most i would say 80 percent of the decisions i make i make with topher mm. like there's very rare once in a great while he'll wake up and i'm like topher i added this like i added a dialogue system the other day but like that was based on him wanting to add like a story element to the game like everything's synergy yeah yeah we're we're, we're pretty together on on most decisions I, I uh one thing that's super great about working with someone for a while like how seb and i have been working together for a while is that we we kind of figure out like what the vision might be for the other person mm -hmm. like whenever seb adds something like on his own it's like i i know that i can trust him to to put out something great because we agree on so many things like and, and even if we don't like we've talked it out enough that like he knows kind of what we're both expecting out of it so like when shared we, vision yeah, yeah we have kind of the shared vision so like when we do stuff on our own like whenever seb is adding something like and i kind of wake up to see it because a lot of times he works through the night uh -huh. i always am impressed I'm, I'm almost always like down with whatever he's added because it's it's what i would have added so being on the same page is like super essential yeah. talking it out is how you get there so communication being on the same page not yelling at each other all the time. <laughs> yeah. All yeah. good things. Yeah. Not having the actual indie experience. Not having the what to, was that? <laughs> I said not having the actual indie experience. Oh, yeah, yeah. People aren't angry and ruining relationships. <laughs> it's, it feels off. Yeah, yeah. So you, as, as Topher, you mentioned, so Seb, you're working a lot on the game overnight. Is that is that true? I did. Uh, a key element here that I don't know if uh -huh. it was mentioned is that, uh, at least as of recently, uh, I've been doing game dev full time. Topher's I want to say is full time, sort of. Yeah, I'm doing game dev kind full time. Of. That let's, was let's, as of yeah. a couple months ago. Oh, I've been cool. Doing game dev full time. Cool. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, I do his full time, and he does it full time. And as a result, though, my sleep schedule is oh. horrible because <laughs> it's been about two and a half years that I, I don't have to go outside. Yeah. <laughs> and um, yeah, this results in just me not sleeping sometimes. Oh. Like I'll wake up at six p.m. and I work to like ten a.m. and then Topher gets up at like seven, so then I'm like dead uh -huh. all day, and then. Oh, cool. Yeah. yeah. It's not great. Then you guys are working on almost, well, it's like 24 hour turnaround. You guys are always working on it, which is, that's kind of useful. Yeah. It's, it's, or almost. Yeah, as far yeah. as, you know, working around the clock goes, it's, it, it's a lot of it is just Sebastian because he sometimes will stay up for these crazy periods. I, I don't even know how he does it, but he works for like 16 hours or something crazy like oh, that. Yeah. And I still have a fairly normal schedule because I haven't been doing game dev full time for a while. I've narrowed this down. There's actually a science behind this. It's called hyper focus <laughs> and people with ADD tend to do this. You can sit okay. for like 12 hours and forget you have to use the bathroom or do anything and just work. Yeah. And it doesn't yep. feel bad. Like I don't feel dead after working 12 hours. I'm like, I feel pretty good, but why don't I keep going? Yeah. <laughs> and oh. I learned over the years not to do that, obviously, because it's not <laughs> healthy. Yeah. But, yeah. Cool. Cause yeah. I wanted to ask, is that when you find kind of your most creative spurts when you like go in these moments where you're just working, you're just focusing in maybe overnight, do you find in the middle of the night, things are kind of just really flowing? Yes. Yeah. Oh my God. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. I've, I've, I've read into that. Yeah. There's a, there's something about being in the night. There's a sense of like, um, serenity and, uh, alone, mm -hmm. like there's, you know, I, I, I share it with my girlfriend, you know, we're living the bachelor young life, but, um, you know, for the most part though, I feel like I'm alone. 
it's quiet. My ferrets are asleep. I'm not getting messages on Discord. Topher's asleep. And I can kind of just, like recently, the dialogue system is, you know, that sounds kind of mm. really cool. Let's sit down and start, you know, 8 p.m. stops at 4 a.m. That's pretty cool. I would say that that's like a key difference between you and I, because you work so great at night and I pretty much my prime hours <laughs> are like 8 a.m. No, earlier. Oh, no, not even. Yeah, like 5 a.m. to like 9 a.m. Oh, and he's wow. Done. Yeah, I normally it's very rare that I work past two or three p.m. Oh, like, man, that's interesting. I've gotten you to five. You before. have gotten me to five. We had a, the Kickstarter night. I got you to like. 10 PM. Oh yeah. Um, the, the, when we were prepping for the Kickstarter, we were working pretty hard. <laughs> that was definitely some crunch time. I give I give Topher that energy. Uh, uh, what's the word for it? Like a blood <laughs> adrenaline. Uh, yeah. Well, no, you like share your blood with someone to keep them alive. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about, man. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, on that Mad Max shit. Uh. That's, we, we, let's not talk about that. Oh, that's funny. Yeah, yeah, that's, that's, yeah. Anyways, yeah. I was trying to say a lot of the times I think that like I can get him to work longer if like if oh. I'm being really energetic, I think it bleeds onto him, which is yeah. part of the synergy. It's like if Topher is really down, I usually get kind of down, or if, you know, vice versa. Yeah. yeah, I I think that doing game dev definitely requires a certain level of workaholicism. Mm. Um, <laughs> we definitely. Seb is definitely, I would say, a workaholic. I don't care what you say, Seb. You're wrong. You're a when you, workaholic. When, you, when, you're being, when you're on contract, you're, you're, you do the same thing. Maybe more than I do, actually. Oh, yeah, definitely. The, where, <clears throat> that was when we first met. I remember something that we always were talking about, that we're both really, like, crazy uh -huh. workers. Like, we work the crazy hours when it comes down yeah. to it. Well, that's super important, yeah. It's easier when you have nothing, though. What's that? It's easier when you have, like, nothing else going on. Oh, like, yeah, for sure. Because m my thing is that, like, if I'm not working, I'm, like, watching my wallet burn. Mm. <laughs> so, you know, like, if I take a day off and I, you know, I look at sales and I'm like, oh, man. Oh, well, I could be working right now on Duke of Defense. <laughs> hmm. Yeah. The... Why am I not working? And I'm like, only 12 hours? Come on, dude. Yeah. You're awake for, like, 20. Man, mm. yeah, 20. That's crazy. I So I'll work on music in the middle of the night, too. I find the same thing. So... It's kind of funny. My girlfriend's out yeah. of town this week, so I, you know, I miss her. But I was like, I'm gonna have nothing to do. I'm gonna have Saturday. I'm just gonna work on music. It's gonna be awesome. We get a ton of stuff done. I didn't get anything done. <laughs> I like, it, it, like in midday, I worked on it, but it just, I was like hitting my head against the wall. Nothing really came through. And then once it was dark, once I was alone, once all the lights were off, my dog's asleep. Then suddenly, cool ideas started you know, coming through and I started, you know, really finding my flow and getting into a space where I was like making music mm -hmm. that I really enjoyed. So there's definitely something to that. I mean, you find what works best for you. Um, but I know absolutely best case for me is middle of the night, you know, maybe 10, 11, cause I have to get up at like six, unfortunately, but you know, work mm -hmm. for a few hours late when everyone's asleep. And that's when, for me, that's when things hit. So Topher, it's funny that for yeah. you, it's like five, six AM. That's when everything's flooding through you. And then by two, you're like, yeah, I'm done. Yeah. Yeah. It's just, it, it, I mean, it's kind of the same principle, you know, cause you, you, both of you were saying that it's, it's like after things are asleep and quiet and relaxed, mm -hmm. you know, Oh, that, that is Topher's quiet. That oh, is yeah. my quiet, you know, because I have always just been an early riser, you know, a lot of the times like at 6 a.m. That's just when I wake up no, without an alarm. You know, I'm just up. So it's just that's people are still sleeping. You know, the world is still quiet for me. Yeah. So that's just where it hits. I like to just wake up and get right to it. But because of that, by the time, you know, the afternoon arrives, I've already been working for so long. Yeah. So then I'm just like, well, <laughs> I guess it's time to stop <laughs> because I've already been working for, you know, eight or nine hours. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I wanted to add to this. If if are we trying to touch on like motivation, or are we just leaning towards more of the creativity side? Yeah, I mean, we'll kind of you know wherever it takes us. I'm I'm open for whatever. I, I want to jump in with like the workaholic side and like having that prime time and like being able to sit down and just do something. Yeah, I think a really key element in that that a lot of people don't touch on is that it's like about really being hungry for it. Mm -hmm. Like I've always been raised kind of like. Not the whole lot of stuff. Not like my parents were poor. I definitely wasn't poor, but I've always been raised in a way where like I more or less had less than the average. And even when I got when I had moved out, that's the same situation. And so I think it's easier to sit and work twelve hours a day when you when you don't have anything and you want yeah. that something really bad. 
really you don't have to have nothing either it's just you have to want something really bad yeah no i i totally i totally agree and i think a lot of times it's not everyone but you'll see artists that are making things in that phase when they don't have a lot and suddenly when they have you know tens of millions of dollars or whatever <laughs> whatever it is yeah. music or art it can change cuz that place you're coming from just it just changes you know and and you might not have that and the art can change too oh yeah yeah with game dev you get a lot of ups and downs Uh uh-huh um like a youtuber plays your game and you make a lot more money than you're used to yeah and i gotta say during those times i've had the biggest dips in work like absolutely the biggest (laughs) dips i'm like oh we're fine it's good i I have rent for one whole extra month (laughs) don't worry about it i'll take this whole week off yeah yeah and then the second that money's gone i'm like oh jesus here we go (laughs) Just back to the grind. Yeah. That's cool. That's cool. That's why you released the game finished. <laughs> now we don't have to. No. <laughs> no. Yeah, it's definitely the lean times. That's when the most work yeah. gets done. Yeah, for sure. Because you have the drive, you know. For I remember um, when we were still doing, you know, Don't Sync. We were still actively developing it and such. And, like, we just released it and we were like looking at the release sales and like seeing how we were doing working on updates and all that stuff and then one day um jacksepticeye played our game on his channel out of nowhere mm-hmm. i don't know if you know who that is but it's uh, a really popular youtuber you know uh, uh. Mi- millions of subscribers and he just decided to play our game somehow some act of god <laughs> who knows <laughs> just picked up our game and our sales you know for that day for that week almost just like went through the roof yeah so many people yeah. were exposed I think to our it game. was 40 wow. oh my god increase in sales it was com- it was so absurd it was it was numbers i have never even seen before yeah i remember seeing all that stuff happen during that day and you know when, when our sales starts shot through the roof i was like man yeah i got it i gotta lay it back you know i gotta relax a little bit because i've been working my butt off let's just chill you know yeah, you, you, the drive definitely goes away when things are good. So Man, I definitely yeah, feel I can't that. even imagine putting something out and then seeing something go forty thousand percent, you know, above what you're typically seeing in terms of sales. That's in, that's incredible. Oh, I'm sorry, I, I misspoke. I meant to say four thousand. Oh, four thousand, but still, said back four thousand percent. Yeah, no, we we didn't we didn't make forty thousand plus dollars at that, that time. That'd be crazy. I <laughs> oh, wouldn't I be thought... here right now. I would be in Hawaii <laughs> in my on my own <laughs> island. Okay. <laughs> Oh, I wish I was there too, man. Seriously, yeah. <laughs> just getting through the week. Jeez, yeah, that's hey. Super- just out of yeah, just out of yeah. curiosity, yeah. Uh, what do you do for your your day job? Yeah, yeah. So, um, so I graduated. It's been just over a year now. So I went back to school. Um, kind of had a interesting path in that sense. So, spent a lot of time just unfortunately kind of dicking around in my early twenties. I didn't have a lot of ambition. A lot of I don't know, just really no path that I, I saw myself going down. And um, around 22, 23, I got my shit together, honestly. Mm-hmm. Um, and I went and I went back to school. So I, I got a degree in, in computer engineering. I graduated. I worked as a um, applications engineer for six months in post sales. So looking at code, um, you know, just debugging customer issues that it was a microcontroller uh, company Hmm. and I didn't like it. I was just looking at code all day and it wasn't as interesting as my undergrad was. And so I totally switched and now I moved into a position as systems engineer, which is really sales engineering. So Hmm. totally different path. (laughs) Um, And I, I enjoyed, I mean, I, I'll be honest. I, I definitely took the easier route coming, you know, it's, it's very less stress uh, in that sense. It's, kind of talking with people on the phone a lot of the time, but it's cool. It's cool. I enjoy it. And it allows for, um, you know, different like passion projects like this and like making my music. So that's one reason why I do really love it. That's really yeah. cool. Yeah. I, I like hearing about like the paths that people take because I, I definitely like my path is definitely super like not janky. Yeah. Super janky. You know, I, <laughs> I dropped out of community college and never even got a degree and went all over the place and then you know seb has made it successful as a as an indie game dev with like his own crazy yeah. path and i, I it, it's always interesting to me to see how how people end up where they are and i find yeah. that a lot of times the people that are like really like into what they're doing at the moment or like you know happy with how things have ended up have these crazy paths where they like try a bunch of different things or like do something totally against the norm oh I yeah think that's really interesting I, yeah yeah, I could not agree more because 
I've seen just, you know, growing up with people in my life and friends and family, the, there are types of people who will just kind of settle on, you know, whatever's happening, go to school, get a degree, whatnot. And that never fit for me. Honestly, I was always jumping around to different things. What interests me? What do I want to do? I was always very introspective with, am I enjoying what I'm doing? You know, what is my meaning in life? What is the meaning of life? (laughs) Yeah. 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 You know, so I I would definitely agree. I think the the people that end up having the most interesting (laughs) stories to tell are the ones that were jumping around and just looking at, you know, what the hell am I doing right now? And is this what I want to do? Yeah. No, it's totally true. I think I think pained artists in all fields, including even if you like work at a call center, like pain artists are the best at what they do, no matter what they do. Yeah. Yeah, it's definitely it's it, with your music. Is it it's just like your hobby? Or are you trying to make like some kind of side career out of it or anything like that? Have you ever thought about doing music in like for another application like media like a game yeah. or, or television or anything like that no i so so right now it's it's totally passion project outside work but i take it really seriously so i work on it every day i work on it as much as i can and i want it to be really 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 good so i mean the attention is to put out the best music of my ability and focus a ton of energy into it and really make something that i'm proud of and if i just did that you know if it was 10 years down the road and i and I had, you know, maybe a set of songs that I was really, really proud of. And I thought that were really awesome songs. I'd be totally happy. But crazy goals would be, you know, to be a mousetrap artist, that would be like insane for me. But that's so much, like so far down the road, regardless, because all, those guys put in so much time to get there that, you know, right now it's just work on it every day and then try and improve every day and see if I can make something that I'm really, really proud of, you know. And I almost approach it more that way too because i find myself i can jump ahead (laughs) very quickly sometimes and be like okay well i'm gonna do this this and this i want to be you know i want to go to edc i want to play all you know and if you start thinking about that stuff you'll in my opinion you can lose the importance of the music you're making you know i i so i try and keep myself from getting Mm -hmm. too ahead of myself you know yeah yeah definitely i um that's interesting I, you know, when I was young, I always wanted to write music and and have my own yeah. like, repertoire of songs. But after a while, I, I really just lost the drive to make music for myself in a way. Like, I just wanted mm-hmm. to make music that went along with something. I think that I just, like, I, I was never really into, mm-hmm. like, writing lyrics or anything like that. So, like, all of my music was always instrumental um, and I always imagined my music going along with something. Like as a kid, I was so into like movies and stuff that I was like, when I was making music, I was like, man, something should go yeah. with this song, you know? And I, I think that's why I, I always wanted to do music in, in games. Even though it, music in games only recently became a thing for me, it was always kind of something that I wanted to do. And <clears throat> that's why I'm so happy that I kind of pursued it um, by getting involved with you know, game making communities and eventually meeting up with Sebastian and doing that. And that's why I'm so happy that I kind of pursued it um, by getting involved with game making communities and eventually meeting up with Sebastian and doing that. It it is cool because it adds a totally different layer. You're not thinking, ah, do I like this song? Do I not like it? Do I need to develop it here? What, What does it need based solely on what you feel for that song? Now there's this whole added layer where it's tied into something where you're trying to tie it to the emotional feel of a game or, or whatever that is you're tying it to. I think that's really cool. I hadn't thought that much about it, but it, it has a whole other element, a whole other layer, which I, I think would just be really fun to, to do. Yeah, it definitely is really fun. It's, it's a totally different challenge than making Mm -hmm. music in a traditional sense. And even, you know, considering all the things that go into a game and, you know, fine tuning, you know, really engineering a a piece of music to go along with an interactive media. Like there's so much more that you can do with that. Like, for instance, I am also doing all the sound of effect, uh, the sound effects for the game. And yeah, when you think about sound effects in the game, you think like all the little, little jingles that play when you hit a on the screen or something like that. Mm -hmm. But it it also is a lot of details. Like when the player is interacting with stuff in the game, like a a lot of the time steps, What's that? Say footsteps. Yeah, sword footsteps. hitting these arrows starting to shoot. The start sound of like a portal opening to the looping of the portal being opened to the closing. 
oh, yeah. where stuff should fade pragmatically, not necessarily even the sound itself, how the sound should sound. It should have pitch oh, bending in it. Yeah, mm-hmm. I hadn't thought about that. There's so much to it. And yeah, yeah. Yeah, it, it's like you end up, like, there's so many little bits to the game that you end up kind of, like, painting this big, like auditory picture mm. and i i think that one key element for me is that i try to make i try to musicify as many elements as possible mm. one example of that is in the game when you pick up coins it plays a little uh, like marimba hit oh cool yeah like, yeah you know, somebody on the marimba yeah. but i i've i've given sebastian a few sounds and i said whenever you pick up a coin randomly play one of these sounds mm. and the sounds actually outline a c major sus2 chord uh-huh so those are like each of the sound is one of the notes in that chord. Uh-huh. And so when you pick up a bunch of coins, like because it's all random, you get that chord. Cool, but when you yeah. pick up just one, it's just a single hit. Oh, I like so that. I think, yeah. I think that that's one of the really fun parts about being involved in the sound you know, production of a game is that it's not just the music, it's the sound effects and how all of that stuff comes together. Yeah. And that's just like a whole nother layer of stuff that you have to think about when you're doing the music. Like, is this are the sound effects that I'm making going to conflict with this music mm. or is the music going to conflict with the sound effects that are possible, you know, while this track is playing? Oh yeah. That's so cool. Yeah. I, I, I didn't think a lot about that, honestly, cause you get the full range to really do whatever you want. So I, I imagine looking at, you know, recording different things in your house to make, you know, a cool idea for a footstep or, or whatever it is, you get full range now. So that's super cool. Yeah. Definitely a lot of, you know, obviously doing sound effects is totally different than doing music, mm-hmm. but you do pick up a lot of crazy tricks, you know, like manipulating audio to get certain sounds. Obviously, like, you know, if I need the sound of like a crossbow firing or a cannonball exploding, I don't have a crossbow, <laughs> nor do I have a cannonball that I can just explode nearby. That's, that's yeah. where the Kickstarter mind is going. <laughs> yeah. Getting a cannon, yeah. You got to you got to get creative, you know, with mm-hmm. with what you have available. For Duke of Defense, nearly all of the sounds are synthesized. Uh-huh. But there are some exceptions where I've had to record audio and play with it um, you know, in my DAW to to emulate something. Uh-huh. But a lot of times, especially for a game that has a more electronic approach like Duke of Defense, I will try to synthesize as much as possible. Mm. And that it's kind of moving away from like music theory and and making proper music and that's really just like understanding how like a synthesizer works and how post-processing effects work on on audio and you know figuring out how you can leverage that stuff in like really weird ways to make music we did like wind in the hub world and i like i asked him like did you download this wind somewhere and just like modify he's like no 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 just white noise what oh yeah i kept listening to him like i can't tell this is so good this is incredibly good and I was like, I don't even know how you'd record wind because the mic would pick up like it'd be clipping. Yeah. How did he do this? Oh, that's a- <laughs> it's it's really just yeah. It's a it's a white noise uh, bit. You know, I have a synthesizer with a with a white with a noise generator on uh-huh. it, and I set it to white noise, and I put the like I turned the tone all the way down and ran it through filter and and reverb, and I had it compressed with an EQ, all this different ways, and it's like just a huge setup on one like synth. Yeah. And then to make it sound like the wind is like amplifying and stuff, I just am increasing the pitch at the same time that I like turn up the the filter. Yeah. And you just get that that wind effect. And that's again, that's not really anything music theory or music related. It's just one of those tricks that I've picked up trying to make sound effects and such. It's just yeah. another weird way that you can configure your audio equipment to do something that you wouldn't normally do. Yeah, I could imagine, you know, moving forward it would be so fun just to develop that over time. You know, imagine two or three games in, all of the different uh, techniques you've picked up into just making really cool. I think it's called uh, Foley, if I'm not mistaken. Is that, do you know? I think it's called Foley, where people, were, sure. I think, so people record different, you know, like crumpling a paper or, you know, different things. And it's, a, there's a lot of it in electronic music, like techno and progressive house and stuff, where, some guys are so freaking good at it and if it's done right it can it can just be awesome in a song is it just like making music out of like mundane things or adding those yeah yeah so they'll still be all the synth elements and you know kick and 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 drums and stuff but there'll be these little ambient you know it's it's kind of almost hard to describe but it is it's like taking things that you just 
find in your house, recording them, you know, processing them and putting them in a song and adding in this kind of flair. And it can totally change a song. I mean, it can really, really go from, you know, nothing into something I think amazing. Yeah. So it's really cool. I would imagine over time that could be something that I, I just picture myself getting really, really into that and seeing what <laughs> weird things I can put into a game, you know? Yeah. <laughs> or I mean, music, if you really yeah. wanted to, if you really wanted to like, you know, really dive into that or if anybody wanted to dive into that, you know, anybody like listening in the future, there's nothing I can recommend more than trying a game jam. And uh-huh. if you're unfamiliar with that, it's, it's normally a short term competition, normally without a prize, just for fun, where you try to create a video game based on a theme in a span of a short amount of time. Sometimes it's a weekend, like 48 hours to make Ludum like- Dare is actually this weekend. I'm not plugging for them because I'm not doing it, but Ludum Dare or Ludum Dare if you spell it correctly. Yeah, uh, that's this a, weekend. Mm-hmm. That's that's a game jam competition where you have you know a weekend to create a video game based on the theme they do, and then a bunch of people make the games, and you just see who got voted the best by by the people you know who actually took part in the competition. That's a great way yep. to dabble because it's just you know it's not it a huge you too. commitment. It, it's yeah, a, yeah. There's you can find creativity and limitation. There's a bunch of fun things you can do all across the board with with your art, your music, and your programming. Um, yeah. You'll meet people too. A lot of people collab. Uh-huh. A lot of mm-hmm. cool themes will have like uh, no legs. And that's the theme. You have to maintain that theme. And awesome. you can't like use outside stuff for the most part. Uh-huh. So like you have to, you have 48 hours, you know, you beforehand, you meet other people, you hire, you know, not hire, but like you, you meet an, an artist and a musician and you grab them and you go, all right, let's do this. And then you stay up for 24 hours. And Oh, that's cool. Yeah. That's, that's a really super fun cool. way to like explore you know, trying out game dev, seeing how you like it. Yeah. And, and if you want to do that for music or for sound effects, I would definitely recommend, you know, joining a forum or a Discord server where people take part in these and just saying, hey, I can do music and sound effects. Who wants to team up? Cool. Because people will will hit you up. Like, definitely. <laughs> the people are always grouping up. That's how I, I've met people that way, too. Uh-huh. It's, it's definitely a thing. Oh, that's sweet. I, I didn't know about that at all. So I think at some point, I think that'd be pretty, pretty sweet, honestly, just to have fun with it. I would, have, of course, I'd, I'd probably do the music piece, but yeah, that would be, that'd be really cool. I didn't know those, th- they have the same thing for coding. Like I remember in undergrad, they do these coding competitions. It'd be the same thing. It'd be like 48 hours and, mm-hmm. you know, be like over the hackathon. weekend. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. And people wouldn't sleep. Um, and you know, you bring a, gr- a, a team together and, um, I never joined one cause I was like, how do you. I remember in undergrad, I was so busy all the time just doing projects and homework and all this stuff. I was like, how do you guys find time to get to a hackathon for like a weekend? I'm studying, unfortunately. It was it was a grind. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, but that's super cool. I think I, you know, why not? I think I will try something like that at some point in my life. Just have some fun with it. Be like, I, yeah, yeah, cool. This is actually my, this is the first time that I've ever sat down to be part of a podcast. I've listened to a few, cool. but I've, I've never actually taken part in one. So this is kind cool. of cool. Are you, yeah, yeah. How do you like it? I mean, yeah. How do you like it? I mean, I would say it's, it's definitely cool. You know, I'm happy to be a part of one, happy to be part of something. Um, I, it's, it's been cool to, to talk about like game dev as a whole, because, you know, working with, with Seb and working on these games has been super cool. And we've, you know, talked about, you know, what we've done thus far and what we're working on and stuff, but it's, it's cool to take a step back and, and look at, the whole big picture, you know, yeah. see. You, you never get to talk about like the music side or really no, any of never. it. Nobody he, he's ever not, he's not as social as, as I am. <laughs> he, nobody ever asks me anyway about like the music or anything. So I, that's I, a, I don't really. slapping beat, Topher. That's all. <laughs> yeah, they just, I, I like it. I don't like it. Okay, I'll, I'll see yeah. what I can do next. So it is fun to, <laughs> yeah. fun to talk about like actually the nitty gritty of, of uh, doing the music for a game and, and putting that all together. Yeah, yeah. What I've found so far, I think, is people who are willing to jump on a podcast when a random guy messages them on Instagram <laughs> are usually going to be cool and easy to talk to, you know? That's, yeah, what yeah. I, that's what I'm starting to, to get out of this whole process is if you're, like, willing to do that, you're probably going to be cool, easy to talk to kind of person. Honestly, yeah. I mean, I, you know, I sometimes I get messages on Instagram of, like, random people. I, I'm not, like, super popular on Instagram either or anything. Like, most of my videos get, like, 200 to 300 
views at most. That one that you found is actually like the biggest outlier of my videos. It's got like 1500 views at this point. I don't even, yeah, yeah, I, I don't understand famous. how I, I was like, oh man, this is what works. I'm going to do another video just <laughs> like it. And I just recently posted a video just like it and it's got 200 views and it's been out for days. So I don't know what, how that works, but yeah. like, if somebody messages me on Instagram, like sometimes I'll ignore it. But like the reason I answered is just because, you know, you, you, you didn't bullshit me. You, you were just like, hey, what's up? Like, all right, this guy's normal. Let's let's say hi. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You know, I, yeah. I, it's just about being normal or even like professional to some capacity. It's just like, you know, totally, totally. As long as you, pre- you know, it's all about how you present yourself, I think. So yeah. you didn't present yourself as a weirdo or somebody that just you know wanted to. <laughs> get to know where I lived or something creepy. So, (laughs) well, thanks. I appreciate that. Yeah. It's super weird doing that. Like just, especially since it's a new podcast too, there's even that double layer, you know, it's like, it's new. It's I'm messaging someone totally at random. So I appreciate that. I've tried to make it as (laughs) like bearable as possible. Like, Hey, this is a shot in the dark, but do you want to be on a podcast by chance? And I've gotten, I've gotten a lot of people that just flat out don't respond. And I've been messaging all different types of people so it's like you know but you guys were the first that were like game development i was looking for that that mixture of music and game so i mean this has just worked out really cool yeah awesome i mean i definitely yeah. you're you know definitely a gamble just reaching out to random people but i mean <laughs> yeah. i don't think there's anything really wrong with your approach you know like even That's when i was do. even when i was telling seb about you when you when you hit me up i was like hey this this guy hit me up and you know, he seems like a pretty normal dude. So I think I'm going to do it. <laughs> you know, so it, It's just kind of just like, you know, your, your approach is fine. You know, you, you present yourself like a regular guy, you know? Cool. 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 Yeah. Yeah. That's, that's, what I hope so. I appreciate the, the, the good feedback, you know, I'd hate for it to be, Oh, that was a horrible experience and you were super awkward. <laughs> and, I mean, you know, all that. Yeah. No, this is definitely, know, please don't, I'm definitely yeah. going to point people at this, you know, when it goes up and everything, because this yeah. has been, a fairly chill conversation. Yeah, cool. I agree. I absolutely agree. That's it for today's podcast. Thank you again to Sebastian Topher for jumping on doing this. They were super, super cool. Um, If you'd like to show your support, go check out the game. You can find them on Steam. Again, Duke of Defense. Um, Check out the demo and look forward to it in October. It's going to be super cool. Um, Other things, go check out Limitless Vibrations. That's my friend Hans Ford's podcast. Super, super cool podcast. I always like to give a shout at the end of the podcast to support him. Um, And that's it. New podcast coming. Look for it in two weeks.